Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to a brand new Destiny video. Guiding Light here, and in today's video, we are going to be breaking down all of the exotic auto rifles to find out which one is the best. Now, for obvious reasons, I'm going to keep out the Necrochasm because it's year one. It doesn't really keep up right now in the Taken King. And I'm also going to be keeping out the Fabian strategy just due to the fact that it is a Titan weapon exclusive. Therefore, I just didn't really find it fair to be comparing it with some of the other exotic auto rifles. Now, Today we are going to be breaking down the Monte Carlo, the Hardlight, the Soros Regime, and the Zalo Supercell. Now I did a video like this with legendary hand cannons not too long ago. Now in that video I kept it strictly to rumble, I figured the test would only be fair if we kept playing the exact same game mode on the exact same characters. Now because these are exotic weapons I did want to at least swap it up a little bit. I wanted to make sure that I got a full test of all the weapons at long range, medium range, and short range. So we are going to be swapping between rumble, control, and maybe even a little bit of rift just to see how these weapons compare in objective type game modes as well. Now before we get into some gameplay, I do want to show you guys the perks that I like to run all in all four of these auto rifles before we start. So for the Zalo Supercell, we have Smart Drift Control. Now aggressive ballistics could be better for you. It really does depend on the map. Kind of just depends whether it's a short range or a far range map. But for now, this is what I do run on the Zalo Supercell for the sake of this review. I didn't want to switch up any perks, but you may find some of them to be better for your playstyle. Now next up we have Monte Carlo, now this is a pretty ridiculous weapon, we've got Smart Drift Control again, and now hip fire, Send It, and we have this last perk which is really interesting, we're going to be getting into this a little bit later, but that can actually recharge your melee upon getting a kill with the Monte Carlo, so we're going to be getting into that a little bit later. Now next up we've got the Hard Light, now this is a really fun gun to use, the bullets will actually bounce off of any surface, which is really awesome if you can actually get that down, now again we're going to be getting into that a little bit later. We got Violet Payload, Quick Draw. I do kind of suggest running Fitted Stock. It is pretty nice. Glass Half Full, which is awesome. So the bottom half of your magazine does additional damage. And there is frame play on there as well, but I definitely don't run that just because that bottom half of the magazine perk is really, really good. Now, finally, we have the Suros Regime. Now, this is a ridiculous weapon. Now, we've got Linear Compensator on here. Now, Smart Drift Control, again, may be better for your playstyle, but for me, I just run Linear Compensator. Now, for you, Spinning Up as well may be better in, in Focus Fire, but we're going to be getting into that a little bit later. The, the differences between those two perks once we actually get to the Suros. And for that last perk, we do run a Hammer Forge. So without any further ado, let's get into some gameplay and break down these exotic auto rifles. So to start things off, we do have the Monte Carlo. Now this auto rifle is pretty decent and the fire rate is pretty great as well. Now it does have a really interesting perk on it called the Monte Carlo method, which will actually have a chance of regenerating your melee on every kill that you get with Monte Carlo. Now this can be an extreme help if you're running a piece of gear that grants you an additional melee charge or something like that. That way the more kills you get, the more chances you have of having two melees at a time. Now that's really helpful on certain game modes and certain game types as well. Every kill you get has a chance of regenerating your melee attack, and when you have two melee attacks, it just keeps stacking up. Now as you can see, Monte Carlo is pretty great. Now you will find yourself having to close gaps very quickly with this weapon. You're not really going to be that effective at extremely far ranges. Now mid to close range, this thing is kind of a beast so long as you're landing your shots. Now one thing I can say that I do not like about the Monte Carlo is the sight. I really wish you could change it or really just have an iron sight. I think it would be a little bit better in my opinion with an iron sight or just a different sight in general. Now either way, it's still pretty good once you get used to the sight. But like I said before, you will have to close gaps quite quickly with this weapon. Just the closer you get, the more damage you're going to do. So it's best to start shooting at somebody when you're as close as possible or throw a grenade or mix it up with some sort of other attack. I do also want to note that it being an exotic weapon is kind of a downside just because of the fact that it takes up your exotic slot and I don't really think it's good enough to exactly take up the exotic slot. Now it would be worth it to take up the exotic slot if you're running a very specific loadout built around that Monte Carlo method perk so that you can have two melees. There are definitely a lot of better choices out there. If you see yourself in some sort of gunfight with a pulse rifle like the Hawksar, Grasp of Malak, or even some sort of scout rifle like the Mine of Multitool or maybe some sort of Suros, you're going to have a lot of difficulty killing people, which is why I see that there's some better choices out there, at least the way that the meta is right now. Now, if you have a Monte Carlo, you definitely shouldn't scrap it. Sometime in the future, this gun will be better. And I'm really hoping that one day they actually allow you to use the blade on the end of your weapon as an actual melee attack. I'm not really too sure why they don't, especially with that Monte Carlo method perk. I'm not really too sure if they're planning on adding that in sometime later date, or if that was just never meant to be. It was really for just looks only. But it would be really cool if one day they did let us use the blade on the end of the gun. I'm not really too sure why they don't right now, but that would definitely be a bonus perk in the future. So after a few games with Monte Carlo, I can definitely say that this gun is a lot better than I originally thought. And if you're someone that can land a lot of precision shots, and if you're, if you're confident enough that you can actually get good at landing a lot of headshots with Monte Carlo, 
You would probably be just as surprised as I am once you get used to it. This gun performs a lot better than I remember just even a few months ago. And if you're someone that can line headshots, like I said, you shouldn't have too much of a problem getting kills with this weapon, so long as it's not too far away. So with all that being said, guys, let's get on into the next auto rifle. We're swapping over to my Hunter and to the Hard Light. Now, this is a really awesome weapon just based off these ricochet rounds, as you can see. The damage to the head is very similar to Monte Carlo, about 20 damage to the head at a medium to close range. Now, it's really cool to use this weapon on really small maps and really tight corners like the one I'm on now, just based off the ricochet rounds. Now, I haven't really gotten too great with them to the point where I can just be confident enough to shoot around corners non-stop, but it is definitely cool because you will find yourself getting a lot of hit markers and stuff like that. Now, when I wasn't using this game in Rumble and I was using it in Control and Rift and other type game modes like that, I found the hard light to be a little bit better just because all of the rounds over penetrate. So it's a lot. It's actually a lot easier than it seems to get collateral hit markers with this weapon, just because the the bullets will always over penetrate no matter what, and because they will actually ricochet off of any surface. And this gun has zero bullet drop off. So the hard light, once you get used to it, can be extremely deadly. Now the ricochet rounds are cool, but it can actually be kind of annoying, as you can see how bright they are and how they over penetrate every target and just ricochet off of everything. So if you're trying to be stealthy or you're playing Trials of Osiris or just some sort of really competitive game mode, it's going to be kind of hard because you're, every time you shoot, everyone's just going to know exactly where you are. It makes a really specific sound and you can always trace the bullets back to the source just because they're always bouncing off of every surface. So it's kind of annoying, but it's definitely one of the more fun weapons to use. It's really cool just seeing all the, how the bullets ricochet off every surface. Now if I had to give you guys any sort of tip when using hard light, as you can see, firing in a, a full auto mode when is extremely difficult. The recoil can get a little bit out of control, so I do suggest sort of burst firing the weapon. I know it's full auto, but if you kind of tap your R2 button, shoot like 4 or 5 bullet bursts at a time, you'll find the guns to be a lot more accurate and just a little bit more effective at long ranges. Now when using that method, I did see the hard light did seem to be better than the, even the Monte Carlo, and when, so long as you're using that burst fire method. Now other than that guys, it's pretty much all I have to say with the hard light. If, you, if you're someone that can get really good at getting those headshots just like with Monte Carlo, the hard light might be something you want to use. Now unfortunately it doesn't really have any sort of perk like the Monte Carlo did where if you run a certain piece of gear, it'll automatically make the weapon more viable. This is kind of just one of those more fun weapons to use and it's a little bit of a troll weapon as well. But now if you're trying to be super competitive, I would suggest not bringing the hard light into PvP. But I could definitely say if you bring this into PvE, you're going to have a hell of a fun time just shooting the shit out of some dregs and some thralls. So next up we have my personal favorite, the Suros Regime. Now this was the best gun in the game for quite a while back in year one, if any of the classic players are still around. This gun used to just be absolutely unstoppable, and I believe I have more kills with the Suros in year one than I do with any other weapon even to this date. And this gun just used to be my all time favorite thing, and I just, I never would run anything else. And this was actually my first exotic that I got back in Vault of Glass like two and a half years ago. So it's pretty ridiculous, this is like my favorite gun in the game. Now, I'm not going to let that bias keep me from this review, but as you can see, the Suros Regime is pretty ridiculous. Now, before we get into the review, I did address that spinning up perk. Now, I don't suggest running spinning up. Now, it, that's the perk that makes the gun shoot faster the longer that it's fired. Now, instead, I used Focus Fire just because the gun will shoot faster when firing from the hip, but do more damage while aimed down sight. Now, there's a little trick that you can do where if you aim down sight and like you scope in and out really quickly, where you can do... Now this is a little, it's a little bit of a cheap part, trick, don't get me wrong, and I don't really use it all that often, unless I'm super close up on multiple enemies, but if you just shoot the gun and aim in and out really fast, just kind of start spamming the L2 button, all of a sudden your aim assist will kick in and you'll actually be doing 32 damage even though you're not even really fully scoped in. Now it's a little cheap, like I said, I, wouldn't, I don't really do it all that often, but there are certain circumstances where if you just spam that L2 button, you will actually do crazy damage just because it'll think you're aiming down sight, even though you're really not. So with focus fire, when you're aiming down sight, this gun does ridiculous damage at just about any range, and sometimes I honestly see myself using this thing as a scout rifle. If you shoot it slow enough, you can honestly use this thing as like a mini scout rifle, and you'll see yourself doing just ridiculous damage. 35 damage to the head, it's pretty damn good. Now, I, you're not going to beat out a last word so long as you're, if you're right up on top of somebody. Now, the hip fire perk is a little difficult to get used to because when you're not aimed on sight, it shoots so fast that the recoil is a little obnoxious. But when you're aimed down sight, once you hit one headshot, for some reason, I find myself just chaining more and more headshots. Now, there's another tip that I could give you. If you aim just slightly above the person's head, because of the way that the recoil works, you'll see yourself actually getting more headshots if you aim just slightly above the person's head. The recoil will just kind of guide you towards the person's head, and it'll get a few more critical shots that way, allowing you to pick up a couple more kills. 
So like I said, I used to use this weapon back in year one just absolutely non-stop. Every single game, no matter what, I would use the Suros. With, with all biases aside, I can honestly say that there's not really anything bad about the Suros regime. There's not anything I can think of that actually say that this gun is bad. There's 33 rounds in the clip, it does amazing damage with Focus Fire, and even with spinning up, it's still decent, although I prefer Focus Fire. Some people may prefer spinning up, it really does depend on your playstyle, but for me, Focus Fire is the one just because it's almost like a mini scout rifle, and I don't have to worry about running up and getting really close to people and just be able to kill them, because it'll do pretty good damage even at a far range. Now before we move on to the final weapon, the Zalo Supercell, I do want to show you guys one example of what I was talking about by spamming the L2 button at really close range. As you can see right there, you see my guys zoom in for just like a quarter of a second, like my sight wasn't even scoped in at all, but it was still doing crit damage as if I was scoped in, all because I just tapped L2 one time. So that's what I'm talking about when I say if you just kind of spam L2. Now it does take a lot of getting used to, and like I said, it is kind of cheap to use this method, but it is a little bit of a trick. I'm not really too sure if that's supposed to be in there like that or if it's just a little bit of a glitch. I'm not really too sure, but that's definitely a plus of the Suros as well, and it's something that a lot of people might not think about if they haven't used the Suros as much as I have. Now finally, let's get on into the Zalo Supercell. This gun is amazing. This gun is really fun to use. It's kind of like the Hard Light, except it was what the Hard Light was supposed to be, which is like an exotic, just electric beast. Now this gun, if you're a Warlock on a Stormcrawler, is just that much more incredible because you're just on an, an arc spree. You've got your arc melee, you've got your arc super, and then you have your arc weapon just chaining lightning non-stop. Now with that being said, this is more of a gun that you would want to use in control or just really a 6v6 type game mode. You'll have a better chance at chaining the weapon's damage across more enemies that way. And if you shoot this gun on an objective, you will see yourself getting some double kills even though you're not even shooting the second person. And it is pretty cool that way just to get those kills. Now this gun is pretty damn good and it will compete with a lot of the gu guns that people use nowadays like Hawksaw and the Grasp of Malak so long as you're not damaged before going to the gunfight. Like so this Zalo Supercell is by far again one of my favorite weapons to use. It's just really cool to chain the lightning between enemies and the fire rate and the accuracy of the weapon are pretty good as well. This is definitely one of the better assault rifles in the game right now. Now this gun is the most effective at close range than any of the other exotic auto rifles that I tested today. At extremely close ranges with creditable headshots, I was beating out Hawksaws and Ayas Lunas even though I was already damaged. This gun is just perfect at really close ranges, which is why I do suggest using it in control as well. If someone rushes up on you, the fire rate and the electric damage, they're not going to be able to kill you. And this gun is really great for that, which is why I do love to run it on some of these close quarter range maps. The closer range... The smaller the map is, the more chance you're going to have of chaining your bullets to multiple enemies, and that is what you want to be doing when you're using the Zalo. Now, another great thing about the Zalo is that I can't even tell you that there's anything bad about it. It's really amazing at mid-range and close range. For some reason, every situation I find myself in, I was able to just get out of it. I wouldn't die. Even when I had no health, I was just, I would somehow just get out of it. I don't even know how half the time. Now, Zalo Supercell is amazing, and I never really had any downsides to it. Even the long-range kills, I was still able to get. And if it was ever too long range, I always had my sniper rifle. But even in that kill right there, I would say that's pretty decent range. It's definitely not like across the map or anything, but it's farther range than you'd be able to get with a hard light or a Monte Carlo, without a doubt. It just the time to kill even at a far range like that is just better than any of the auto other auto rifles, except for the Suros regime. So with all that being said, guys, here is my list of the best auto rifles in order. So the Zalo Supercell comes in first place just due to the lightning kills. It's absolutely ridiculous. I got 34 kills in one game with the Zalo. There's just nothing that could beat that. Now second place we have the Suros regime, and the only reason it didn't get first is because it was just a little too situational. It's not that it's bad or anything, but it, it's just not as good as 34 kills with the Zalo Supercell, I'm sorry. Now third place, I had to give it to the Hard Light. I wanted to give it to the Monte Carlo, but the Monte Carlo is a little too situational, and you have to be running a piece of gear for it to be as viable as it's meant to be. Otherwise, it definitely would have gotten my third place pick. Also, because of the Hard Light's ability to kill and overpenetrate, and with its no damage fall off whatsoever, I just had to give it to third place. And honestly, I might have even given it to second if it wasn't for that Zalo Supercell being as good as it was. And back in year one, I definitely would have given it second place before the Zalo Supercell was introduced. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this comparison video. If you want me to do any more comparisons, just let me know in the comments down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video because it did take a very long time to make. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.